anybody remembers 2006, 7, 8, 9, when all the rules were broken, and I really had lost a major part of my fortune. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What is going on, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, where we are proving to you that you can live a life of abundance on your way to more. You don't have to wait for more. You don't have to wait for that six-figure, seven-figure income. You don't have to wait for that perfect day. You don't have to wait for the perfect relationships, connections, or any of that. You just have to start living today. It's all about a mindset. So we are having conversations with other amazing men and women of abundance who are living a life of abundance and somehow paying it forward to their community, in some cases even bigger. Every one of our featured guests shares their kick in the gut moment because this is an important pivot point in many people's lives. And I know you've had kick in the gut moments or sometimes we refer to it as a C, significant emotional event or some sort of adversity. And here's the thing, adversity is a guiding factor towards personal destruction and poverty or massive success and growth. What makes some people fall flat and never get back up while others bounce back stronger than ever? Well, our conversation today will answer that and much more. And as usual, I want to give you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today by paying it forward and sharing Men of Abundance with everybody in your circle. Share the website, menofabundance.com. Share from your favorite podcast player, or if you're connected with me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it, I'm out there. Just share one of my posts that mentions Men of Abundance. And guys, if you are not a member of the Men of Abundance closed group, then go to menofabundance.com and click on the members tab at the top of any one of the pages or menofabundance.com forward slash members. Request access to the group. It's men only, and we are continuing this conversation underneath each one of the episodes that I post in the Men of Abundance Facebook group. And if you're not on Facebook, or ladies, if you want to leave a comment under any one of the episodes, the easiest way to do that, as far as I know, is to download the new Himalaya app, H-I-M-A-L-A-Y-A. Download the new Himalaya app, Subscribe to Men of Abundance, and you'll be able to leave comments underneath each one of the episodes. That's a really cool feature that Himalaya has, and there are many more features coming up really soon. You can also just go to the show notes of this episode, and I'll have the link there for the Himalaya app that will also take you directly to the Men of Abundance podcast. So our featured guest today has ran his own leadership and training organization, Yetta LLC, since 2010, which gives seminars and courses to entrepreneurs and business owners. Currently, most of his work is consulting and training for organizations that are looking to implement best-of-class leadership and management practices. In 2010, he was featured in a weekly newspaper in a year-long column of leadership and management. This eventually turned into a book writing project, which is now complete. He is passionate about helping entrepreneurs and business owners succeed in their business. His mission is to empower leaders and managers through giving them the knowledge to change and helping them implement the changes in their organizations. He is a certified Myers-Briggs evaluator, certified seven habits for highly effective people facilitator, certified positive psychology coach, and trained with Roy Camarano, author and consultant on his entrepreneurial transitions theory. He is the author of The Prosperous Leader, How Smart People Achieve Success, where you can find more about him and the book at theprosperousleader.com. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Jacob M. Angel. Jacob, welcome to Men of Abundance. How are you doing? Good morning, Wally. Thank you. Doing great. How are you? I am outstanding. I really am. I'm just doing wonderful. Where are you at in the world today? I'm up in uh, upstate New York. Mm. Cold up there? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been it's been it's been bitter cold, but it's still cold. 
Yeah, I was watching yeah. one of my biggest, you know, at the time of this recording, it's we're right at the end of November. It's always been a tradition in my family. I always, my dad's long since passed, but one of his favorite things to do is to sit and watch the Macy's Day Parade. And I was watching it this weekend as usual. And my goodness, man, so much them kids out there marching and everybody right. standing out there. Oh, I was so comfortable yeah. sitting here yeah. in my home in Tampa, Florida, watching <laughs> it. <laughs> right, yeah. Absolutely. So I like to start out the conversation with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Jacob? Okay, that's a great question. I love the attitude of gratitude. Uh, I just got back uh, yesterday, the day before I've been to the UK. My son lives there with his uh, wife and four little kids. And we haven't had an opportunity to visit them in a while. So me and my wife hopped over the pond, like they call that. And we spent a few days with them, a weekend and a few days. And it was just amazing uh it was it was just so beautiful we spent time with them and it was uh really a lot to be thankful for so yeah great, that is great so food. amazing to be able to travel like that um when you get a chance and i'm i'm a huge advocate of traveling i've been to 23 countries on five continents and it's it's the best education that you can ever get now when you go over there and visit uh, with the with your son and his family, do you guys get out and and get to know some of the locals and stuff? I mean, how long has he lived there? So he's uh, his wife's from from London. He's lived there uh, about ten plus years, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but he just recently moved out of London proper, which is crazy expensive, very cramped, no room, and unaffordable, really. Yeah. And he moved to a suburb, which is a new neighborhood. And I went to visit some of the friends that he's become friendly with and it was an amazing experience and we had a great time got to know some of the neighbors the locals so yeah it was a very very nice experience uh, i uh, you know my background <laughs> you mentioned travel so i our family's in the spice business and i've traveled to all the jungles where they grow spices and that's fascinating oh that but, is very fascinating oh yeah that is uh, unique, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So what jungles have you been to specifically that you find the most interesting? So the Spice Islands, there are quite a few Spice Islands. The most famous one are Indonesia. So I've been mm -hmm. to quite a bunch of Indonesian islands, island hopping. Uh, I've been a lot. My, my real focus was India, south part of India, India called Kerala or Cochin. Maybe a lot of people know the Malabar Coast, the island of Cochin, which is fascinating. That is probably the biggest uh, spice growing area in the world. And what's unique is that I, I think they told me 80% of the spices grown in, in India is consumed locally uh, with, within India. And only 20% gets exported, I think. And they are the world's largest exporters. Wow. So I go to tell you how much they consume. And well, everything is with spices in India, curry and. The oh, whole yeah, country absolutely. smells of spices. Hands if you've down, been... Indian food. And, and I, now that you mention that, I never even considered it. I love Indian food ever since I was a little boy. Well, and that whole country, I don't know if you've been to India, but... I have not yet. Uh, oh, yeah, fascinating. But that whole country smells of spices. Mm, I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's a huge difference between the north, the south, uh, and the... But fascinating. So spice. So I've been to, I've been to the uh, jungles in the Amazon in in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Whole different. I've been to many many different countries. Spice growing and spice. So it's uh, travel is very very fascinating, especially when it's part of your business. So. Yeah, absolutely. And get to meet all the amazing people that are growing all of these spices and or. You know, however they, they get a hold of them. That is super fascinating to me. Uh, wow, what an honor and, and what a blessing to be able to do that. Correct, correct. So correct. how would you describe yourself, Jacob? So I, I've got a what I think is a little bit of an interesting uh, background. My father was a Holocaust survivor. And his father, unfortunately, perished in Auschwitz at the age of 39. And my father came over through having to go through many, he was originally from Eastern Europe and had to travel to many countries to finally somehow get into the U.S. I'm not sure he never told us how he got in, but uh, came to this country and started from scratch. Uh, no 
no family to speak of, no no money to speak of, no language, no no industry knowledge. And had a lucky break because somebody hired him and, and the guy had a spice shop in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, if, uh, if some of your, if you know where that is. Mm-hmm. And the fellow told him, you know, Mr. Engel, you're a very bright fellow. Why don't you go to Brooklyn, which was, I mean, today Brooklyn and Manhattan is just a hopscotch away, but then it was like the other side of the world. And and the rest is history. He built this enormous, enormous enterprise with some of the other family members. And I got to join the business in 1975, and it was really fascinating. So I've, I've never worked for anybody in my life. I've been an entrepreneur, and I've been surrounded by entrepreneurs. And I, I love the entrepreneurial thinking, but I also know some of the shortcomings of entrepreneurial thinking. So I... I, I took somewhat of a semi-early retirement. My father passed on, and it was sort of difficult. To, so I took somewhat of an early retirement, and I've been passionate about helping entrepreneurs and helping business owners take their businesses, especially family business owners, to take their business to the next level. And that's been a very passionate thing of mine for the last few years. Yeah, and, and thank you for doing that, and and thank your family, and, and God bless your family. When I was stationed in Germany, I... Let's just say it was a very surreal event that I was able to go and visit. I think it was Dachau. Yeah, and the, the, just the, the, to be able to survive anything like that uh, physically and mentally is, is part of what I do is why I'm, I enjoy doing this Men of Abundance podcast and sharing abundance with people because I've had some events in my life that really put things into perspective. And even though my events are pretty you know, serious to me, uh, nothing compared to that. I would never compare it to that. But yeah, um, just thank you for that. What what you're doing specifically with entrepreneurs, why do you feel compelled to do that? Why is that, that type of uh, mission so important for you? So uh, when my father passed on, I I, I realized that he, he was my, my mentor. He was my coach. Uh, I learned, you know, the school of hard knocks and and everything I learned about business was from him. And he was this unbelievable, gifted business person. But what was very unique about him is that he was unbelievably giving to the community, unbelievably giving to people in need, and all in a very, very quiet, unassuming way. And even though we dealt in, he dealt in millions of dollars, uh, he, 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 you know, he was happy with just whatever he needed, which was, he lived a simple, comfortable life, but simple life, and but was uniquely able to give away millions of dollars to other people, organizations, communities, and we were very involved in Israel. And I learned so much from him, but when, but when he passed, I felt this tremendous void. So I did two things. Number one, I decided to take upon myself some of his great deeds and do that. And so I started training entrepreneurs, helping business people get them started. And and the other thing was I wrote this book called The Prosperous Leader, which the first part is really dedicated to his legacy and how it was much more than a business. He left us a legacy which was way beyond just that he built a business. And it was all about giving back to the community, helping people in need, uh, leaving the world a better place. And he, and he was always grateful that he was able to make it out of you know, the uh, Eastern Europe and, and reinvent himself and start a new family. He never forgot that. Yeah. So those are the things that I'm trying to perpetuate. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, and the thing about this guys is, uh, you know, I mentioned this quite a bit. I'm really, I really just, when people start talking about business and capitalism and like, it's a bad word uh, because there are some bad examples out there for sure. Right. But the majority of the businesses that are out there that are in our communities that are employing you, that are contributing to for the just based off of their service alone. But a lot of these businesses are what I refer to as business. They're they're business for purpose businesses. Correct. And there's people out there that own these businesses and work within these businesses that are doing amazing things in the community and it never gets any recognition because these guys don't go out and say, look at me, what I'm doing. I'm, you know, feeding this many people. I'm 
clothing this many people, given all this kind of stuff. They just don't. And it doesn't make the news. And it just it really does anger me because there I just want to lift up. And that's what I love to do. Just lift these businesses up and lift these people up that are doing things because people say, well, Wally, why do you want to make more? Why do you want more? I want more because I can contribute more. You're right. You know, I can't look at Oprah. She couldn't contribute as much as she does if she didn't have more. And she's still getting more, but she's contributing more. And so many other people are doing that. Oprah is a huge example in the limelight. But your father, Jacob, is the, they're the unsung heroes Correct. of our communities. Right. And unfortunately, you're raising such a point which irks me to no end. You know, the front pages get all these scandalous things and they and you know they over 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 dramatized but the 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 like you said the 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 day in and day outs of companies that employ thousands of people families get you know are able to 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 sustain themselves beautifully that doesn't even make it to the back pages Mm-mm, never it makes it on my show though <laughs> right and i want to thank you wally for that i, I must tell you that it's a really beautiful thing that you're doing and i, I applaud you and I, I appreciate to be part of this I appreciate that. I really do. You know, and one of the things that we've already talked about, your family's major kick in the gut moment from the past, but I would like to get into a personal kick in the gut moment that you've dealt with, and I'm sure you've had just a few. Uh, And if you would, share with us a kick in the gut moment and really make us feel that, and then we're going to roll that into the enough is enough moment and what you learned from that and what you're doing with that information now. So I haven't really shared this publicly And when I read your email, I was, you know, I was taking a deep breath. Uh, So when I left the family business, I owned some significant shares and I was able to sell it back to the family. And I left with a nice sum of money, which I thought would take care of me and my family. And I was well invested and I followed all the rules. But then if anybody remembers 2006, 7, 8, 9, when all the rules were broken and I really had lost a major part of my fortune. And um, I also, you know, and, and really, it, it was it was a scenario that I haven't really confronted before. So I was lost. I was really lost. And then in a mysterious way, uh, I was contacted by a, a community organization who asked me if I'm willing to help other people that have lost their fortunes, their jobs, their money, and it sort of resonated with me, and I and, and it sort of also was very healing for me. So uh, I was able to turn that around, and that really transformed what I was doing into a whole new pathway, which is which I've been following for the last few years. And here you are, down and out, for the same reason all these guys are that that they're asking you to lift up and mentor and and coach in a way, and it makes me smile because guys. When you give, there's so many things that occur. I learn more. I became a better man because of it. It lifts me up. It makes me feel better. Anytime I'm down and anything's not going right in my life or my business, I reach out to somebody. And at the very least, I tell them, I love you. I respect you. And what can I do for you today? Uh, I joined this community uh, initiative and I came in and I said, okay, you know, what could I be of help? I'm available. I've got time on my hands. I've got knowledge. I run a huge family business. I've read. I'm certified. I'm, you know, I've got a lot of experience. And they said, well, here, here's a list of about hundreds and hundreds of people that lost their jobs, very highly qualified people. What can you do with them? So I pondered that and I interviewed them. And then I said, let me try this. Let me try something. And I took a class of 15 of unemployed. Some have lost their fortunes. Some have lost their jobs. And I asked these guys, I said, are you re- ready really to roll up your sleeves and do whatever you know it takes to get back into the job market? And of course, they said yes. So what I did, I compiled um, what I felt was everything that I knew, all, all, every book that I've read, and, every, and I threw the books at them. I said, we're going to go through this significantly and really reinvent who we are, what we are, and myself in the the process. And I brought in people from cross-country, motivational speakers, productivity experts, uh, time management, whatever you can think of, positive psychology, whatever you can think of. 
And after six months, 14 out of 15 found jobs. Wow. So I bent back to the community and I said, heck, this is something that works. Let's continue. And they said, well, we're, you know, we've got a limited amount of funds. We're doing other things. Why don't you go ahead and do it yourself? And I said, fine. So I started my own leadership training course, and I got certified in many other things that I wasn't. And I've trained hundreds and thousands since. So that sort of pushed me into a whole new – and I never thought I'd write a book. I never thought I'd be a trainer. Uh, but that has propelled me into a whole new – stage and it's been very very rewarding that's huge i absolutely love that and thanks for doing that that is paying it forward in such a big way correct by by helping those individuals how does that help do you feel that that helps within their family and perpetuates into the community so obviously to help people you need to get to understand them and their their challenges and their own issues and your listening air you've got to be strong for them so you got to be strong for yourself it was it was sort of an effect on me as well. But what really was dramatic effect was when 14 and 15 got jobs and they, I would get this you know, huge email or, or this phone call with this joy that they finally can sustain their own family. I mean, that that is just a, an unbelievable sense of gratification. And many of them have gone on to run very nice businesses and they've called me in to help grow their own business so that <clears throat> there's a there's a tremendous uh, effect that has just been going on and i find it to be very very gratifying yeah absolutely thank you for doing that that is so amazing Pretty so jacob sure. we're at the point where we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders you ready to do that okay sure excellent so share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. You know, first of all, it resonates, abundance resonates with me significantly. In my book, I mention the abundance versus the scarcity mentality. And I've, I've, I've found some sources going back almost a thousand years. But I find that the more I think abundant, the more I allow myself to share. And I've trained others and taught others the abundance versus the scarcity there's just so much out there and there's so much resources available. And if you think and you allow and you don't think small, you just think big and you share, things will change. Um, it's it's some called the law of attraction, the law of abundance. There's so many laws out there, but it is all true. So I want to encourage everybody to think abundance. Um, in terms of entrepreneurs, I, get, I, I do sh- – work with entrepreneurs a lot and it's not easy to be an entrepreneur Mm. it's quite difficult and many of them would say you know if i would have known all these challenges i've never done this and the ability for me to help them and say i understand the challenges i've been there done that i've helped others and let's just take it to the next step next step and then at a certain point they get to that vistage to that peak and all of a sudden business is just growing nicely and there's profits and all the hard struggle pays off that is a moment of of glory that they feel and i feel it too just it takes persistency um it's not easy you've got to be tenacious they call it grit they call it resilient call it whatever name you want but i would say two things are usually important number one have a supporting family members or friends or community around you, you need support. And number two, hire a coach, Mm -hmm. somebody who's been there, done that. Because the experience, um, my mentor, Roy Camerano, who's probably one of the greatest guys that understand entrepreneurs, uses the analogy of climbing uh, Mount Everest without a Sherpa. And he says, you climb Mount Everest without your Sherpa, you die. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you try and build a business on your own, it's just so difficult. There's so many steps, but using a Sherpa, using a guide, using a mentor and a coach, and there is a difference between the two, will really allow you to make sure, A, you're on the right path, B, that you have somebody who understands you, helps you, guides you, and the, it, it's just so much easier. Every time I've ever done anything, anything significant in business or in my personal life, uh, when I look back on it, I always had a, a coach or a mentor or a guide of some sort. 
every right. single time. So that is absolutely huge. And I want to ask you, working with all the entrepreneurs that you've worked with, what do you find is one of the biggest challenges mentally uh, within entrepreneurs? Okay, so I'm happy you asked the question and happy you included the word mentally. Because uh, what I, I've written a lot about on my blog as well is about you know, the greatest wars are fought in the, in the depths of our hearts, in the depths of our minds. Mm. Uh, there's a lot going on in our mind. According to research, there are 60 plus minus thousand thoughts a day that many people experience. And if it's all negative, then we're, we're just banging ourselves over our heads. So understanding our thoughts, controlling our thoughts, having and positive psychology is really the great advanced psychology that helps people think on the positive will create that positive mental attitude, which again will create the abundance, which will create a, a much easier path than, <clears throat> excuse me, than slogging it through with all that negative thinking and being down and out on ourselves. So learning how to think positive is probably one of the best things that a, an entrepreneur can do for themselves and again you can use a coach you can read uh, i'm a big fan there's a professor uh, out of upenn uh, marty zeligman he's written some fantastic books on on positive thinking authentic happiness optimistic child flourish she's got a whole bunch of books and i find his books to be very relevant for the entrepreneurial world the numbers go back and forth but i've found consistently that Achieving greatness in anything that you do is 80% mindset and 20% strategy. And you can have the best strategies in the world, but a, just a terrible mindset. You know, two different guys with the same exact strategy, same background, same resources, the whole bit. But one's got a, a great attitude, an attitude of gratitude, and the other one does not. And is just going through the flow and just doing the strategies day in and day out. The one with right. the attitude of gratitude is going to win hands down every single day. Correct. Uh, and it's just the yeah. fact of the matter. So it really does pay to get into those type of books and get into those groups. And I believe proximity is power. So get around the type of guys that, that are doing what you want to do. Maybe not the same industry, but entrepreneurs who have the right mindset and can. that's the best way to immerse. You know, I lo I'm all about immersion, you know, getting yes. in there and getting it done. Correct. 100%. So what daily habits make the biggest impact in your life, Jacob? So number one, uh, I'll be honest, I was a lousy student, but a very, very avid reader. And I, I, I think I read a quote somewhere that not every person that reads becomes a leader, but every leader reads. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of, you know, Warren Buffett reads like hours and hours each day. I find reading is probably the biggest and the best habit, keeps our mind active, it allows us to learn new things, and I'm, a, I'm an avid reader, and I encourage people to continuously read, read and read. Uh, and, and that's a habit that I've acquired over time, and I'm dedicated to it, so that's a fantastic habit that I'm a big fan of. I totally agree. And I was not a good student and I was not a reader <laughs> growing <laughs> up. And it wasn't until later in life that, um, and actually I have to give, you know, all the thanks to my wife, quite frankly, because she's the one that was talking, you know, she's been an avid reader and she was a good student. And she's just so frustrated with my boys, my three boys, because they're just like me. <laughs> so, and uh, mm -hmm. once I started reading, then so much, I mean, it, it really does make a huge difference. And I love audiobooks. I, I listen to a lot of audio and podcasts, but sure. I also also pick up a book. Uh, I have one always. I have two of them sitting right here in front of me right. that I read and I take notes on. And that being said, uh, you've already mentioned a couple of books, but right. what would you recommend to our abundant leaders read or listen to and why? Right. So again, you're right. Uh, those people that have challenge reading or they travel a lot, podcasts are a great way to, and there's so many ways how to read a book and you don't have to actually read. I've got a recommended leading list on my book, on my website. I would say probably the number one foundational book that I suggest every entrepreneur to really read, and it's not an easy read, is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by mm -hmm. Dr. Stephen Covey. Great one. That's probably where I acquired a lot of my leadership skills. I've gone to the Covey Institute, and I'm certified and I'm trained 
and it made a huge impact. And I really believe that that's a very, very foundational. And he actually men, uh, mentions in great detail about the abundance versus the scarcity mentality. Uh, I mentioned, pro, yeah, prof, I mentioned Professor uh, Zeligman. That's, I think, a, a fantastic way to learn how to help our minds think positive and He's got some great books, great insights. I'm a big fan of, and again, this is not for everybody, but I'm a very big fan of self-awareness, which is emotional intelligence. So any of the emotional intelligence books are very, very powerful. I particularly like something that came out recently. It's called EQ 2.0. And the advantage is it also comes with a great self-test, which gives you the ability to understand where you are in terms of uh, emotional intelligence. And as we know today, emotional intelligence is, is a great predictor of success. And I can almost single-handedly say that when I do work with entrepreneurs, one of the big things is looking at their emotional intelligence because that is a great predictor. Some of the other books that I've also uh, <clears throat> come across, there's a very simple book, but again, very interesting and it's, it's been an impact. It's written by Dr. Edward De Bono, who's an Italian th- critical thinker it's called the six hats of critical thinking great book of small book but a really great book about how to think through things on six dimensions uh, six hats of critical thinking um big fan of good to great jim collins peter drucker is probably the the genius and the giant of leadership and he, he's a must read some of his books are easier Viktor Frankl is a, is a is a fantastic read about. He himself went through the Holocaust and and a, a book that I've come across through the circles of uh, of Martin Seligman is a book called The Resiliency Factor, and it's a great book of of grit, resiliency, the ability to bounce back, and it helped me tremendously, especially when I was down and out, to rebuild, re- and and come back with with the ability to. And we all need that tool of resiliency. So those are some of the books that I would really suggest. And on my website, I've got some more if people want to take a look. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we don't want to leave out the uh, the Prosperous Leader, uh, right. which is your book. And I'm looking Correct. at your your uh, book list here as well, guys. You can check that out at the Prosperous Leader dot com under resources. There's the recommended books, and I've read. Most of these books that you have on your on your shelf here, it's absolutely beautiful. I want to get a hold of your book as well. What do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? Oh wow, that's a that's a real tough question. In terms of there's there's no question our mental attitudes, our mental disposition. Uh, we need to think positive. We and again, most people confuse sort of positive with 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 um, throwing you know, throwing risk to, to 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 the wind. But it it it's it's having the ability to think through everything in a in, in a very clear way, but yet determined to find. And every I can tell you this from experience, and Wally, I think you'll, you'll agree with me. Every challenge is an opportunity for growth. Mm-hmm. Every challenge, you just need to, and if you can't do it on your own, ask your wife, you can, your spouse, or ask your coach, or ask your, your, anybody that has that ability to take it and turn it around. And I can't tell how many people I've helped coach through that they, they come with this insurmountable problem. I'll give you two, three examples. I had a friend of mine who, unfortunately, this is a tragic story, He is, his child was born with a mental retardation I, I don't remember if it was you know some very very hard hard case of of, of a you know a parent having that experience and he it really it knocked him out and he was down and out but, but he was a very bright fellow and after he got over somewhat of his loss and accepting the whatever it was uh, I said why don't you turn this into your passion helping parents that deal with children with issues. It might be physical, it might be mental, it might be. And he, he found that to be a so healing, but also he became like a world's expert where uh, and wrote books and uh, on 
how to deal with this adversity of of having a child that's born with a physical handicap or a mental handicap. And he turned it around on himself, and it became his passion. So in every in every there's always an opportunity in every in in every adversity. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it does help a lot. It's very therapeutic to be able to do that and help other people in a huge way. It it really is. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Jacob? So I, I would say the, the number one thing is really the attitude of gratitude. Uh, really looking at, uh, there is a story that's sort of a, a, a fable, but a, I think a great story about a guy who, and, and I'm a religious person, so it has a religious bent to it, but you can you can use it in any way, shape, or form. About a guy who dreams, he goes up to heaven, and he comes there, and he sees there's a long line. And he asked uh, somebody, what's this long line? Oh, he says, here, we're asking God for our for health. And then he continues on, and he sees another long line, and he says, what's this line? He says, well, here, we're asking God for wealth. And here, we're asking him for um, you know children and a spouse and all the good things that we continuously ask for. And then he gets to the last door and there's nobody standing there. And he says, what's this, what's this for? He says, oh, this is where you come to thank God for all the good things he's given you. <laughs> and uh, so we need to ingrain ourselves with the attitude of gratitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, there's always going to be somebody that has more. If we, And there's always going to be somebody who's richer than us, thinner than us, more smarter than us. Uh, but we need to really ingrain the attitude of gratitude of what we do have. And uh, it's like the story about the person with ripped shoes who was pitying himself and then saw somebody without shoes. Yeah. And, then the, and then the person without shoes was pitying himself until he saw somebody without feet. Mm-hmm. So we, we need to ingrain ourselves with that attitude of gratitude. It is huge. It makes a difference. It helps us. Rebuild resiliency is based upon gratitude, and I think that having that attitude of gratitude just brings on more good things, and it 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 just draws to us and gives us that energy. So, attitude of gratitude is by far the biggest uh, and the most important thing that we start our, our our day off or our life off. Yes. Jacob, thanks for sharing that. I totally agree with that. We're going to close this up. But before we do, what did we not talk about that you want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? So leadership is huge. I think uh, our country is not putting enough emphasis on, especially in our educational system, teaching life critical skill sets, Mm. teaching kids. uh, Because, you know, both of us were sort of admitting that we were not great students. Mm -hmm. And... But you can be taught life critical skills. You can have emotional intelligence. You can have abundance. You can have an attitude of gratitude. And you can be very successful. So I want to encourage our school systems, our parents, our leaders to create those type of programs. And uh, those things will have a huge impact. And I've seen that over and over again. And when I teach, I'm, there are many Many times that I'm, I'm talking to an audience of people that have not been very successful and then you give them those new tools and you encourage them and you coach them. They go out to do great things and th- there's such a huge uh, benefit for them for them and it's also a gratifying thing for, for, for me and for others. So uh, read. I mean, listen to podcasts. Listen to Wally's podcast. <laughs> listen to other podcasts. There, there's so many opportunities out there. There's such a wealth of information. Uh, build on that. And uh, entrepreneurs are really changing the world. We need to create more entrepreneurs. We have to help them grow. We should have more programs. Uh, need to help people go into business. I'm continuously trying to find resources, and I struggle because, quite honestly, it's hard to be an entrepreneur because there are no good resources out there to help. Uh, financially and other ways so whatever we all do together to help our entrepreneurs i think is 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 huge so those are those are some of the things I'd, I'd really love to see happen wonderful absolutely agree with all of that and um we are going to close this up i greatly appreciate your time and and your wisdom and i really appreciate what you do 
Jacob, go out, live your life of abundance, man, and keep paying it forward because it is truly making a huge difference, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Wally. Appreciate it. And you're doing a great job, and I really commend you for that, too. Thank you. All right, guys. So today, amongst other things, we talked about leadership. We talked about resiliency and various levels of adversity. Now, being a certified master resiliency trainer through the Department of Defense, I can tell you that resilience can be taught to a certain extent, but significant emotional events and experiences are really what builds up your ability to be resilient, to bounce back and bounce back stronger. The one thing that I've found that does make a difference in between those who get through a significant emotional event and bounce back is sitting down after the event and putting everything into perspective. And to do what I refer to as hunt the good stuff. There's always something good that comes out of every event. Or at the very least, there's still something good and plenty good in your life that you need to focus on. So let me give you a couple examples. Let's start with a drastic one. Let's say you lose a loved one. Somebody is killed in a tragic accident. They die to an an ailment like cancer or something of that nature. And it's somebody very, very close to you. And you are just destroyed by that. I have lost so many people in my life from an early age through my adulthood. I've lost close, close friends. I've lost relatives. Both my mom and my dad are gone. My brother's son, 21 years old, just turned 21 years old, struck by a car and died at the hospital. I've had some serious events like this. And it is tragic. It is hard to deal with. But I sit down and I put it into perspective and I cherish the time that I had with those people. I remember the amazing times we had together, those trips that we went on, the talks that we had, the conversations that we had, the knowledge that they shared with me, and just the experience of being with them. And then I put it into perspective and know that they are in a great place. My belief is they go to heaven and they are in a wonderful place and they are peaceful. Let's look at something less tragic. Let's say that the transmission and your only vehicle goes out and you have no way of getting around or getting to work. I had a situation when I was stationed in Germany. My family was actually in Germany, but I was deployed. I was in Bosnia and the transmission in our vehicle in our van went out. And it was going to cost like $3,000 to get this darn thing fixed. Now, I was early in my military career. I wasn't making that much money. I didn't have much of anything at all in savings. And my wife is back in Germany in the cold, still has to take my son to school, still has to do grocery shopping, all that kind of stuff, and get around, and has no way of doing it. So she contacted one of our friends that was there in the area, somebody that we had met. And a blessing came. And then they introduced us to an Army Emergency Relief Fund that we could get, an interest-free loan that we could get to pay for the transmission. So the good that came out of that was we learned of an Army Emergency Relief Fund that we could use in situations like that. It took us a while to pay it back. But more importantly, we got some really close friends out of that deal because that brought us even closer. That individual who was a senior ranking uh, NCO He ended up consistently checking up on my wife. His wife would come in and check up on my wife, make sure everything was okay. And I felt so much better being deployed knowing that we had somebody there that would be able to help my wife if needed. Now, guys, go out, live your life of abundance, and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.